82 gear driven 101 here. Um, I've noticed that there's not a whole lot of videos out there of people actually showing techniques for doing low profile tires. So I thought I would do a video for you guys to show just how I approach doing them. I have here, this is a, let's see here, 225 for the 18, so that's a pretty low profile. It's like about 19 inches with the front here. It's close enough. That way, it's got the inside of where the tire wall is. So I'm not going to pinch the tire, but I can sneak under the tire and I can grab the rim. So now, I have a position, you can see it's inside, and I'll grab the rim, but I won't grab the tire. But now I have to push down the rim. And to do that, I need to use my assist on here. There's an attachment, a cone. It's got to press down on here, center the wheel, and expose the rim to the claws. Alright, so this is what you want to see. You want to see the claws here. See it right above where the bottom of the rim is. So what you're going to do, Ross is holding it down, I'm going to engage the claws. I'm going to raise this back up. Take the cone out. And the rim's in there. It's not going nowhere. It's not nothing. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take one of the rollers, I'm gonna press down on the sidewall, and I'm just gonna work work the uh, sidewall down off the B, and I'm gonna put some lubricant between the tire and the rim, ideally on the uh, inside upper edge of the rim. I'll show you in just a second. Okay, so this is what you want to see. You see here, there's lubrication. I try to get underneath the edge there because what happens with these low profiles, friction is your enemy. So you want to make it as slippery as possible and easy to come off as you possibly can. Lubricating right here on the inside will help the rim, uh, the tire, pop over the rim. So now that I've done that, I'm going to raise, actually I'm going to raise it again. I need to move it over one notch in the middle. I'm going to drop it again. But first, I'm going to bring the tire pressure sensor back a little bit. Okay, back to about there and I'll tell you why. So I'm going to drop it down. Next, I'm going to take the duck head. And I'll have to put this down for that. Let me see here. I'm 
Now, I set it so the tail of the duck head is a little high, it won't touch. And if you see here, I space out the head so it's like a couple millimeters away from the rim. That way I know I'm not going to scratch up my rim. Next one I'm going to do is that because this is pressing down, you know these have a stiff sidewall, it's hard to get a pry bar underneath there. So I'm going to use this roller to help me get underneath the tire so I can pull it over the duck head. I do find, if you look at the levers, there's two ends. There's a sharp end right here, like this one, and then you got the gradual spoon. I have found that this, the sharp curve part end actually makes uh, pulling the, the uh, sidewall over the duck head easier. So that's the way I do it now. See, nice and easy. I raise it up. The pry bar will stay there. Now I'm going to go about 6 o'clock to where the duck head is. Now, also, I must mention, I put the tire pressure sensor at the end of the duck head. Because that's, I put it there because that's, when you're taking the tire off, that spot, as it rotates, is in the least risk of being damaged for the tire pressure sensor. So what I'm going to do now, is I'm going to take this roller, press it again at the 6 o'clock position, because what well, that will do, is that's going to bring this end of the tire into the drop zone. That's going to make it easier for me to take this lever, pull the sidewall over the duck head. Now another thing that I like about the sharp curve part, it doesn't really get stuck under the sidewall because with this gradual spoon, I felt it was going to dig in back into here. But with this, it's right at the edge. So actually what I can do is just pull it out. And I'm risk damaging the rim. So it's right here. And then I just raise up the roller. And I rotate the tag to the table. And there we go. It pops right off. And that's partially, mostly due to the fact that I put that lubricant, if I can get a good angle. I'll, I'll get a good angle later. Now I'm going to grab the uh, pry bar and I'm going to get the bottom half off. But before I do that, I'm going to rotate I just noticed an issue. Again, I positioned the valve stem right about there. So when I'm prying up the sidewall, this part right here is actually going to be free of the tire. It's not going to be exposed. That's why you want to position the valve stem at this spot when you're dismounting. It's going to be different for you when you mount.
All right, so we got the tire off. Now a little about the rim. I was telling you about lubricating underneath. What you want to do is you want to try to get lube on this part right here, okay? This is what will allow it to slip over, okay? Now that the rim's off, this is also your drop zone. This is where you want to get the bead of the tire down into. Because when you go to take off the tire on that first the, the, the first sidewall, when you pull that lever over, this is actually going to draw the tire in towards the wheel. So with these very shallow sidewalls, there's not a lot of gift. So that's why a lot of people struggle trying to try the sidewall initially over the tire wheel so they can get the tire off. So what I do now is uh, I like to lubricate the inside here and I like to lubricate it here. It's not 